Welcome back everyone, welcome back to KTC Open Jam TV. Happy Sabbath. We are gonna go straight into it for chapter number 8 of the book of Proverbs. Let's get into it. This one is this one is entitled The Excellence of Wisdom. Now, first number one. Doth not wisdom cry? And understanding put forth her voice. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, how can wisdom cry? And how could understanding put forth her voice? Now, the question for you. Have you ever been in a discussion with somebody and you are trying everything you can possibly do to help them understand what's going on yet they are fighting against you and you're just thinking man I wish their eyes could be opened and see the reality this is how wisdom cry this is how understanding put forth her voice even to right now in our society if you look closely when men say certain things, what do women say? If you don't do this, you're not a real man. And what, what do men say? No, we just have preferences. We have boundaries. We will do this, this way. And how many times you try to argue with most of your women to help her understand hey listen I understand what you like but I also have my preferences and she cannot fathom that as a man you have preferences or boundaries but you're supposed to accept every woman as it is have you guys ever been into this kind of conversation we talk to the women that, hey, we also have boundaries, we have um, certain requirements, and they're like, no, that is not true. And they try to fight us on whether we have boundaries or not. Yes. I'm telling you right now, this is how wisdom cries out. Let's move on. Let's move on. She standeth in the top of high places, by the way in the places of path. She crieth at the gate, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. So basically, from the jump, as you walk in, you have an idea of what's coming for you. But then, you get to that place where whenever you tell the truth or you, you explain to them what's actually happening, not what they all do or seen in their home, but what is going on across the uh, space, they are not able to conceive that because in their bubble life is always been done one way and when he says when he, when he says he, she standeth in the high places it doesn't only mean like on high but it means in the place where a lot of people are in in a crowded area so as many people can hear wisdom as possible. The gates. Gates are a great place to spread wisdom. Because most people, they go through the gate. Um, basically. Let me just check on. Yes. The entrance. So, 
anytime there's like a door open and someone is gonna most people are gonna go through that is the best place to to be at so that wisdom can be shared and that's exactly what God did with Israel Israel the way they were situated they have the ocean on one side they have Africa on the other side they have up north where most of the trades ha- if you wanted to trade you would have to go through that little region that was a perfect place for a wish for wisdom to be spread because everybody goes through that region for trading it's like it was a gate but of course many people did not like wisdom let's see unto you O men I call and my voice my voice is to the son of men O ye simple meaning open minded understand wisdom and ye fools be ye of an understanding heart so God is calling out the fools those that all say that God does not exist God is calling them out to understand his existence open your mind but the question is will they I don't know here for I will speak of excellent things and the openings of my lips shall be right things and unfortunately some people don't like the right things I think I saw a video the other day where a girl said I want a ma- I want a man who has a lot of money even if he gets some of it illegally I'm okay with that I'm like what why would Let's keep on moving. Next. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an, abom- is an abomination to my lips. You know, one of the abominations are the alphabet community lifestyle is an abomination. Um, another one worshipping graven images is also, no, is also an abomination actually you know what um, as I'm speaking I'm going to also share with you some of these things just so you know when I speak when I say abomination you're not thinking I'm making that up um so there are um oops certain um things in the bible that is considered abomination so let's look at some of them if you look into the book of ezekiel i don't know if you guys know that in ezekiel chapter 8 ezekiel chapter 8 Certain things are abominations to God. Let's begin with uh, this. I'm doing a search for abomination. Okay? Abominations. Ezekiel chapter 8. Verse number 5, it begins this. He said unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and beheld, and behold, not the altar at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. Right? Even 
the great abomination that they commit, right? Outer image, but meaning uh, worshiping images is one. That's not one yet. There is more than that. He said, <laughs> look into the wall, like that hole that they made in the wall, and you see what they did. They also did some wicked abomination that they do. What did they do? They had what? Idols. Idol worship. It's abomination. More than just that. More than just that. You remember the weeping of Tamu, Tammuz? That's not an abomination. If you know what Tammuz is, you know what this is. This is going towards the alphabet community, the LGBT community. You know what the biggest one? Sunday worship. Yes, Sunday worship is the greatest abomination. Look, and he brought me into the, to the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, five and twenty men, to her men, with their back toward the temple of the Lord, and their face toward the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. Sunday worship is the greatest abomination. You know why? Because once Sunday worship happens, the next thing that comes is judgment. Just saying right now. Ezekiel chapter 8 talks about the abomination, vision of idolatry in the temple, Sunday worship, greatest abomination, next, judgment. I'm not going to spend much time on that. Let's go back into this one. Verse number 7. So, now, some might be wondering, well, what happened with the um, LGBT part you were talking about? LGBT part. Um, when we mentioned Tammuz, that part was LGBT part. But, in case you'd want it to be like something that is more concrete, let's look at it this way instead. Um, let's go to Leviticus. Leviticus 18. Oh, by the way, did you know that Molech has something to do with LGBT community? Okay. So you go, you make your children pass through fire, through Molech. You shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. Meaning, me as a man, I cannot be in bed with a man as I would be with a woman. Why? It is abomination. There is more. I'm just going to let you know right now that when it comes to abomination, the alphabet lifestyle is abomination last verse and the words of my mouth are in righteousness there is nothing forward or perverse in them why because God does not lie God does not say things that are bad he does not say things that are um, evil he does exercise judgment in righteousness just as anyone would but even now people do judgment on righteousness so wisdom there is excellence in wisdom but people that are fools are gonna do everything they can not to follow wisdom because most of the time wisdom is gonna do or say what is right and not what feels good. Again, it was the open door TV.
Dieu a 